Hey YouTube fans, so today I am going to show you this really cool neat trick and how to test for your brushless motor and find out if it's any good anymore. Um, to do this, um, a lot of people say you can just take a regular battery with the connector on it and a uh, 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 your brushed motor. Remember this is only going to work for brushed motors. Um, brushless motors you can't do this with, it burns them out. Um, and you don't want to do that. Um, basically, what it was is you, you can kind of just take a, a, uh, a the battery and you can hook your lead straight into the battery but it's as you can see it's not an easy process just because everything is going to jump on you and when you connect this battery or this lead from the motor into the battery it, it, the, the motor is going to jump all over the place and it's it's just a see it's just a it's a pain it's hard to control um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you kind of a little contraption I made um, that just allowed me to do this in a way that's a lot easier, in my opinion, a lot safer, and um, a little you're just in more in control. Um, so I'm going to show you that. Just give me a second here. All right. So again, here's the here's the motor, battery, and a little wired contraption I made. It's really simple. It consists of a little bit of wire, a button, the battery connector, and two terminals that match the leads coming off the battery, just the opposite kind. Um, pay close attention um, to your power wire. It's just when you're making a circuit, it's best to just pay attention to the wiring, especially the coloring, keeping the the uh, the power flowing in the right direction just makes things a whole lot, pardon me, a whole lot simpler. Um, to use it, all I do, positive wire into positive, I hook up negative to negative, all right, simple as that. Make sure the button isn't sticking so that if when I plug in the battery, it, uh, it doesn't just fire off on me and then plug in the power. So what I've done is I've created a button circuit, this being the button obviously, and this way I can hold onto the motor so it doesn't jump around and I can control just how much or how long the duration of the test is, right? So plugged in, it's all connected properly, and three, two, one. Right? With that, it was simple. I'm not startled. I know exactly what is going to happen. I don't have to worry about shock or anything along those lines. It, it, it's just a a smarter way to do it. Um, one of the things that a lot of people do with their brush motors as well is they do a water break in, and this setup is um, almost ideal for that. What you can do is you can replace this switch here um, with a toggle switch one that it's just a position back and forth think like your uh, light switch in your kitchen or bedroom kind of thing to turn on your lights um, you can do the same thing with one of those and it, what it would do is be just like holding it down continuously right until you shut it off um, for water break in they'll drop one of these brushed motors right into um, a bucket of water and flip it on and allow it to break itself in um, so it's a great way to do that um, Anyways, so if, if you like this idea, please share it, um, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the to uh, Spikers RC. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope you found this uh, idea helpful in your projects. Um, yeah, spread the word. Cheers, guys. And actually, I just forgot to add, the whole purpose of this is to test your brushed motors. Um, obviously, this one's good when I apply power to it, right? I, it spins, which is great. Um, if this didn't spin, then that's when we know there's an issue with the motor and 
Um, some brushed motors, you can rebuild them. These ones, I haven't had any luck. I can't get them apart anyway. They're all pretty much press fitted and they're cheap enough. You don't really care. Um, take that for what it's worth, guys.